Jim, I'm going to show you how I cut EPP foam. First of all, we need a nice, nice flat table. I'm using a welder's table, but a piece of plywood will work just great. The airfoils are going to lay in this way, so we want a narrow table that's long. This one's four feet long, works fine for uh, wingspans up to about 42 inches. We're going to need a power supply to heat up the, the hot wire. We're going to plug a uh, cord into your electrical outlet. Let's try to do this for around a hundred bucks. So try to round up some stuff that you've got around the house. This is a computer cord. Notice the ground wire. I've got a junction box from an old construction project left over. So I'm going to use that. If you aren't plugging into a GFI receptacle, then put a GFI in the junction box. So the power comes in, it goes to the GFI. From the GFI, it goes to the dimmer switch. Well, my wife didn't like dimmer switches, the old style that is, that has the push on, push off, and the twist to control the power. So I had a couple of these laying around too. So put that in the junction box. And then from there, we're going to come out the cord, and we're going to go to the most expensive part of this whole thing. I got this from Granger. It's a step-down power transformer. You can do a pause and get the number off of this if you like. But it's kind of neat because it's got a circuit breaker. It's going to step the volts from 120 down to 24 volts, but in the process it's going to create a lot more current, and we need the current to heat up this wire. So the two yellow wires here coming out of the transformer then are going to go to the alligator clips, which are then clipped on to the Rini wire. Rini wire, spelled R-E-N-E, -E. it's 12 thousandths of an inch in diameter, and you can get that off the internet as well. Note that the Rini wire is tied to a spring. That allows us to keep a fairly constant tension on the Rini wire. And also note the knot that we used. It's called a haywire twist. If you're a fisherman, you'll know how to tie this. If you don't, look it up on the internet. Don't just twist the wires together. You'll find that when the wire starts to warm up, the, uh, the wire will come right off the spring. Same situation for the other end. A haywire twist, twist will work real good. Notice I've got a little insulator, broom handles to hang on to when I'm pulling on the wire. And folks, that's about all there is to this. So let's, uh, let's move on and maybe we can cut some EPP foam today. Next step, make a pattern. We're cutting EPP and that requires a lot hotter wire than cutting EPS or other kinds of foam. So make your pattern out of aluminum. This will work best. Get the tops and bottom perfectly smooth so that as the wire drags along the top and bottom of the airfoil, it won't hang up. Get a nice smooth cut in your foam. We've got our aluminum airfoil glued onto this end of our foam block. And now we're going to get this block positioned right so that we get the exactly the kind of airfoil that we're desiring to cut. First thing to do is find the 25% cord location. So in this case, 10 inch cord, 25% of that is 2.5 inches. We measure back from the leading edge of the airfoil back 25%, we make a mark. We do the same thing down at the other end of the foam. So this is back three inches, so we're going to make another mark back three inches. This is where our spar is going to be cut into the wing. So we take our rainy wire and we line it up. We line up our foam so that we've got it straight directly under the rainy wire. And then we come up to the leading edge of our pattern and notice that it hits right on the black line here. And if we measure that distance, that is one and a quarter inches. One and a quarter inches times four is five inches, so that means our wing tip will be five inches. And that is exactly what I want. I want the 50% taper. The tip cord length is half of what my 
airfoil is up here at this opposite end. Now notice that if you want more taper, we simply push the foam closer to the spring. So let's do a few things to make this operation safe. What about protection of your eyes? Let's wear safety glasses. So we've got the safety glasses on. What about if the wire were to break? The spring at the far end will pull the broken wire toward the spring, but some short piece of wire might whipsaw back and lash you. So let's make sure that we're well protected. We're wearing a long sleeve shirt. I'm going to wear a glove on my cutting hand, the hand that's pulling on the handle. And finally, well ventilated area. Open the doors and windows so you aren't breathing, breathing in poisonous gases.